Hello everyone, uh, I haven't uh, made a video since uh, Thanksgiving, so uh, Happy New Year and Christmas to everyone. Um, and I wanted to start the year off by doing a part 2 video that I was probably supposed to do uh, back in maybe July or August. I was going to do it of, of this year, um, and it's uh, the second arc of Berserk being the Golden Age arc. Uh, it's taken a while to read Berserk, <laughs> just because it's so much content to consume, um, and just, there's so much that goes on with, uh, uh, some of these arcs that Berserk has just from the artwork and the paneling and everything go that goes in this series, it does take a while to actually, uh, consume. So first off, um, I think this is one of the best arcs, uh, I've read in a manga in, in a long time. Um, because it it just has so much lore to it. Um, you know, we have this gradual magic being, you know, kind of introduced. Um, this kind of infusion of of so many different things, you know, you know, spirits and you know, ghosts. Um, the the slow trickle in of the Bethel. Um, yeah. Truly, truly some interesting stuff. And then we had, of course, chapter 83 that I didn't, wasn't aware that I wasn't supposed to read. Where there's this whole God's will, heart, you know, this whole Griffith thing. There's a pretty interesting YouTube video about how, uh, you know, it's the reason why we hate Griffith so much. And it's pretty interesting, Miri's decision to pull it. Um, also, oddly enough, uh... When I first read that chapter, it was around the time when he passed away, so it was kind of weird that there was this chapter about a giant heart, and then that's kind of what did him in. Um, but still, it's pretty bizarre that it's not part of the volume set. Um, I think there was supposed to be a bigger plan for uh, the God's Hand, and I'm not quite sure that uh, Miori decided to go down that right route after all. Um, something else, and, and, you know, it's also the lore of, like, the time period and the, the, uh, medieval <laughs> kind of thing, and also it's darker nature. I mean, say Guts is actually born, um, from this character that is hung from a tree, which is probably one of the darkest, uh, you know, character introductions, which, again, this goes back into what I was going to talk about next, which is the correct order to read this. I always feel like... I should read stuff online about series before because again this is actually something that's in maybe a, a wrong order because I feel like reading the Golden Age arc would have helped me be like whoa Griffith is evil you know because the first volume you know the first arc with the Black Swordsman arc that I made a video about I wasn't really surprised that Griffith I was just like who is this guy you know this this alien looking dude I, I don't you know so then when they reintroduced him in the series I was like well this guy's evil anyways so I, I don't know why they make you read it that way or it's presented that way I think it's the wrong order um, but I do know that chronologically that those were actually first um, and which makes it really interesting because the flashback itself um, if you read the Black Swordsman arc first um, guts is backstabbed. Um, you know, you can understand where he's coming from, and, you know, he kind of comes off as this cold, told, cold kind of Batman-like character that just doesn't care about anything and just kind of does, you know. But now, seeing this, you do understand. So, I don't know. It's it's one of those interesting things. Um, it's one of the longest arts, too. Uh, it took me probably the, the whole summer... So it's about three months. It was a long time to read uh, an arc. I read it in uh, Tonky Bond form. So I'll, I don't know if that takes a while, but it's just kind of interesting um, when you think about that too. Um, you know, another thing I really liked about this section of the story is characters like Zod. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my favorite scenes is when he throws that sword down to Guts and he's like, well, you know, finish these guys off. There's so many good uh, war uh, fight scenes. I love how Guts slowly but surely gets into the band of hawks. Um, his analogy with the uh, uh, the sparks and the flames of the, all the people down below, and, and it, that's just really top tier characterization. Um, him deciding to leave the band of hawks because, um, which 
kind of results into everything becoming chaos, but, you know, that's actually Griffith's fault, so you can't really blame Guts for doing that. But I think what's pretty interesting is um, this whole dynamic between these two characters being rivals and, and you know, having so much uh, to say between each other, you know, between the swords and, you know, when they fought Zod and then he leaves. I mean, there's so much going on. Another thing that was cut from the anime, I guess, was the Walden stuff, which is very confusing because when I talked about somebody about this at work, they were like, who the hell's Walden? I was like, um, never mind. Uh, it's pretty nasty stuff anyway, so I can see why they would uh, put it in the anime. Um, but that was some pretty graphic, also a pretty awesome moment from Guts when he actually is able to finally defeat, um, kind of pretty much defeat an apostle. Um, for the first time that we see, you know, in his life, obviously, he defeats one early on in the Black Swordsman arc. Um, but then, you know, I think another real highlight of this area was Griffith's descent into madness uh, and this ascension to this kind of power. And, you know, there's all these political backstabbings. You know, he kills this guy because he wants to put him out of the picture. And then he, then the wife of this man who was going to be king uh, maybe possibly someday tries to actually like kill them all and then you know sh <laughs> then he burns her alive um, and you know he just you know this whole thing with the council and then he becomes this general of all the uh, only to throw it all away you know because God, you know he's he has to have everything his way and you know everything has to be according to him uh, he's a very controlling person um, just being able to uh, control guts like that and, you know, I would say it, it, you could just go talk forever, really, about all these dynamics between these characters, you know, Guts having to kill his kid, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the Eclipse was kind of, as much as it was a betrayal, if I had read this first, this would have been anime's greatest betrayal because it's just crazy, you know. I... I the thing is, you can't really blame Griffith for being, you know, crippled and for wanting to, um, at the end of the day, you know, be a living being and be an active person because he has no, his tendons were cut. You know, his face was so horrific that people, they had to put the mask back on. Um, you know, that's, uh, you can't blame him for wanting something. A man that desires all this stuff. I mean, it, it's just... I don't know, it's, it's just bizarre because I know a lot of people either like, hate Griffith or the, all this stuff. Obviously, once we get to the Eclipse and once we get to the Casca stuff, I can understand why people would hate Griffith. I'm just saying, the, the part that I don't get is the betrayal part. I could see it a mile away, even before, without even if I read this arc first. It just seemed to go that way. They weren't close enough friends. He was more controlling Guts and thought of him as more of a equal comrade but then of course when he had that conversation with Casca he actually said something different so mm, I'm not sure about that um the eclipse was very hyped up like everyone's like oh my god you know it's it's insane it's on the level of the end of Evangelion but when I read it I don't know it was just it was fascinating it was beautifully drawn can't deny that <laughs> probably my favorite panel of the whole thing is when he tries to go up to this guy, this person that used to be his friend, his comrade, and the, the, and he's like, "Oh, this guy's still alive!" And then this demon just pulls pulls it apart, and it's just a shell of like the the man that you know this demon left in two pieces. Pretty awesome, gr gross, grotesque. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> that was a uh, kind of shocked me. Uh, that was pretty cool uh, in some ways. I mean, I didn't really feel that much towards the Banahawk except for. The kid with the knives, I honestly don't remember any of those names. Or the um, guy that was always kind of talking to Guts a lot. Definitely uh, kind of feel for those two guys, but pretty much everyone else I don't really care about um, too much. The Casca stuff, ew, gross. Really fucking gross. <laughs> uh, you definitely hate Griffith just for that Casca stuff, for sure. Um, but... You know, <laughs> besides that, I, I didn't really ever care about Griffith, really. He was a fascinating character, but I just, you know, it's kind of like Dolph Flamingo from One Piece. You wanted to see this guy fall, and 
really hasn't fallen from grace. Um, but you kind of understand where he comes from, right? You know, from his childhood and all that, from the small amount that we see. Uh, there's a lot of lore with this. Uh, the skeleton, or the, um, what the hell is his name? Uh, Skull Knight. When he shows up, I mean, that was some awesome characterization. Of, or like, I don't know, flashback when we actually get to see this guy that, you know, supposedly the God Hand were created to get rid of him in the first place when he was, like, trying to just take over everything. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I, I definitely think that's those two guys... He is the general from back in the day. Um, and it is pretty cool. I think Void is actually what Griffith is to Guts, which is really interesting stuff. I wish we got to see more of it, but I don't think we ever will. Um, and definitely one of the most dynamic panels is when he comes in and saves both Guts and, and Dacosca. It was one of those really crazy things. Um, I, one thing I don't understand is why they didn't pursue Guts and Casca because I thought everyone had to be sacrificed, but, um, maybe that'll be explained later. But, uh, anyways, <laughs> and, uh, that should do it. I mean, that is one of the more interesting, absolutely just fascinating arcs. I mean, really, just the, the two dynamics between these two characters, they are quite literally yin-yang. Uh, there's this interesting line... And uh, uh, another anime series called Naruto. Um, I'm sure you guys heard of it. Um, and when Donzo kind of dies, one of the things he says is that you were always the light within uh, this. You know, you know, I was I was only a light within this foundation of darkness, while you were this. You know, had this like kind of eh, you know kind of so-so intentions but you had this light that was surrounded around you you know it's like this yin yang kind of cringy dialogue at the time but when you look at these two dynamics of guts and uh, griffith it is very similar you know he is a foundation you know griffith might have been an okay person at some point but he deep down and ty is really uh a, a, you know you know, he can't, he can't get past that past. He has to be in power. He has to do something like that. Um, so I do think it's interesting that, oddly enough, Guts is actually more of the light, even though when you look at the two, if, you know, blindly, you would think that Guts is almost the villain. So that should about do it for me. Um, I guess I'll see you guys on the next video, hopefully about another series I really like called Seven Billion Needles. Um, so hopefully that comes out. Uh, next week or so, and, uh, well, have a great rest of your day. Bye.